Recently, I had a patient who had ascites and was in liver failure. If they're jaundice and they have a huge stomach and their eyes are yellow and their skin is jaundice, then most likely they're in liver failure. Incidentally, that's an awful skill to have, especially if you find yourself in a restaurant and after you finish eating, the cook walks out and you realize that they have the telltale signs of liver failure. <sighs> Yummy. But back to my patient, unfortunately, sometimes we're judgmental. And a lot of healthcare workers would probably attribute liver failure to an unhealthy lifestyle, unprotected sex, uh, whatever, alcohol abuse. Well, first, don't judge, okay? And that was not the case with this particular patient. This lady was a naturalist and didn't like doctors, but she did a lot of home remedies. She had no history of alcohol abuse, no drug use. She was definitely not sexually active. To my knowledge, I'm not gonna judge. Also, her lab tests were not indicating that she had an autoimmune disorder. So hey, Ms. Lady, patient, do you take any medications at all? Any, anything that's not listed here? Of course, she takes uh, natural remedies. Okay. All right, on a side note, one of my pet peeves is people asking doctors, or people asking me about, is it okay to take it? But it's natural, right? Okay, well, so is opium, it's natural. Cyanide, for that matter, is uh, natural, right? In fact, most drugs start out in the natural world and go through the rigorous process of the FDA approval before they go out to the general public. Okay, I'm not gonna discuss how inefficient or efficient the FDA is, but there's a reason that there's a rigorous process before medications go out to the public. Case in point, niacin in high doses can cause liver damage. Uh, but do you know what's high in niacin? Energy drinks. So I'm not gonna sit here on a high horse and tell you not to take supplements. Bills are good. Bills are good. Okay. I, along with the rest of you, 40% of the American population, take supplements. But do your research. I don't know if I really believe that the supplements that I take are helping anything. Well, I mean, I do, otherwise I wouldn't take them. But I do watch what I eat and for the most part, I always watch how I eat. But we want to be healthy and we love to feel good about ourselves. And because we want to feel good and we want to feel amazing, we collectively earned the vitamins and supplement industry a whopping $5.7 billion a year. So I don't think they're running out to warn you about the dangers of overuse. And all that said, here are some supplements that you want to really be careful with. What, what I did find that was pretty interesting was that green tea extracts are the subject of many reports of liver toxicity. Green tea. Now, it takes apparently a lot of green tea to start causing liver damage. And you can still drink like 13 or 14 cups a day and still be okay. But then if you start to really concentrate the green tea, then it's gonna cause liver damage. But then again, I mean, who the heck can drink 13 cups of green tea? A number of reports suggest that kava often taken for anxiety or insomnia may cause liver damage. So too much vitamin A can cause liver damage, as can high doses of niacin. Uh, high doses of CBD may cause abnormal results on liver function test. So be careful with the CBD. That's trend out there. Everybody's CBDing it up. 
rarely elevated liver enzymes and liver injury have been reported with the use of ashwagandha 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 supplement Uh, the highest risk of folks who had liver damage associated with vitamin intake and supplements were bodybuilders and people who were taking vitamins for weight loss products. Most supplements contain multiple ingredients so the researchers weren't always able to pinpoint the harmful substance and that's part of the process that's pretty rigorous with the FDA, making sure they identify the chemical with the side effects and the intended uh, benefits versus risk. Hey, on a positive note, apparently mi milk thistle extract may help protect the liver from certain toxins. However, 80% of milk thistle supplements fail tests of quality. <laughs> So just doing a little bit of research, I found this awesome guideline, uh, the diagnosis and management of idiocentric drug-induced liver injury, but so it, it lists the main culprits of liver injury of drugs. Pretty interesting that amoxicillin is on this list, uh, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. Now I always thought those were clear by the kidneys, but okay. Let's Google some stuff. Let's Google some liver failure. <laughs> okay. So if you're wondering what John this looks like, he looks like that guy. He looks so sad. Look at that guy. Bronze. That's a nice picture of a liver. Liver failure, baby. That's that. Hmm. Oh, not a liver failure dog. Not the dog. I just can't handle the dog. What? Transformation woman who put her liver failure down to what? Turning 30 after she undergoes a life-saving transplant. Liver failure chihuahua. Little chihuahua and liver failure. Not the chihuahua. There's a huge list of things that can cause you liver damage. I'll put some links below. One of the main things is do your research before you start taking any vitamins and supplements and watch how you pee. If your pee doesn't look right to you, that's when you need to call somebody. And that's when you need to call your doctor and have your pee checked out, okay? Have it checked out.